dude, you're not going to believe what just happened. What happened? Tell me about it. Dude, I was just in my yard and I saw this cool egg and it's it's like bigger than an ostrich egg. I'm like, what is this big ass ostrich egg doing inside my front yard? So I went to look at it and then just all of a sudden this like scorpion looking thing just jumps right on my face and it kind of actually felt good, kind of like a little face massage and it popped out and I'm like, oh, well, that was just crazy shit. I was uh, let's let's tell my boy Brad about it. And... Oh man. Wait, it came off okay though? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Moment. Uh, I'm gonna be sick. What's going on? You good? Well, shit. That that did not look good. I don't think that looked good. He had a cool shirt though. I thought the shirt was cool. I saw uh, Ghostbusters. Oh golly, man. I'm worried about his uh, his overall well being though. I. <laughs> That did not sound good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Good Real Hunting, along with the continuation of Good Real Hunting 2020. I am the Brett Man, and that is the boss, Brad. And today, we are going to talk about one of the classic sci-fi horror movies in the history of the sci-fi genre, and that is Alien. Alien came out in 1979, and it was directed by Ridley Scott, which if you don't know who Ridley Scott is, um, some of his big-known movies are Gladiator and Blade Runner 2049, which is, wasn't that the sequel to Blade Runner? Yeah, he did, uh, he did the original as well. Yeah, abs yes, he certainly did. And he also, of course, he did Prometheus and Alien Covenant, too. And a little quick uh, plot synopsis, which um, before I get into that, actually, this is a spoiler review. So if you have not seen this movie, stop this video, go watch the movie, which I'll be honest with you, I'll be pretty shocked if you haven't seen the movie at this point. But if you have it, that's okay. Uh, better now than ever. Uh, watch the movie, come right back to this channel so you can hear our thoughts about the movie. Quick plus synopsis about this movie. Um, seven crew members are on the ship called the Nostromo and carrying around some mineral mineral ore, some, you know, from throughout their space travel. They're on their way home until all of a sudden they're suddenly awakened um, to answer a distress call from this planet. And then when they get on this planet... Um, it was a lot more than they anticipated. And one of the crew members uh, brought aboard this um, small creature-like, and it just totally messes up their whole scenario, and it just gets batshit crazy from there. That it does. That little creature was only at the beginning of his lifespan, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, which we will get plenty on the Xenomorph. Absolutely. You want me to go ahead and uh, talk about the cast for a sec? Yeah, let's talk about the cast. Go right ahead. So the movie cat the movie uh, stars uh, Tom Skerritt, Sergoni Weaver, Veronica Catwright, your boy Henry Dean Stanton, uh, John Hurt, Ian Holm, Yafet Kodo, and uh, Bali Badejo as uh, as the alien himself. And uh, you already went over uh, Ridley Scott as the director. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the cast. Yeah, and um, I also like to quickly throw out there um, two people that I really thought that impacted the movie for me, and that's the um, the composer of Jerry Goldsmith, because I thought he did a phenomenal job with just the sound and the music in this movie. Um, ne never felt once out of place, and it's just like just the perfect tone of like just being trapped in outer space. So the cinematographer, uh, Derek. Fanlit, which I thought he did a fantastic, fantastic job in this one. Um, all the alien, the xenomorph looked amazing. Just the spaceships looked really good. And I actually thought the effects of this movie were very, very solid for a late 79 feature. They won the Academy Award that year. 
best Damn right effects. they did. And it much deserved. Yeah, I agree. All right, so tell me what you like about the movie. Uh, the movie, pretty much, I love the premise of just being outer space, where you're pretty much all alone. You really don't have much help other than just the crew member you have with you. So you might not like them, but you have to get along with them in order to survive, which I just loved all that con. Except then the big concept I pretty much loved about this movie is when the crew um, tries to figure out what this alien is. It's kind of like the same thing with the audience because the audience is also trying to figure out what this creature is. So it's like the audience and the crew members are on the same journey together to discover what this new organism is. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I, I feel the kind of the same way with your positives. Um, obviously, Sergoni Weaver was amazing in, in the role of, uh, of Ripley. Um, she was a big positive for the movie. She, she was somebody you could kind of relate to, and she was uh, somebody you could root for. She, you know, she was a strong character. Um, I love the love, love, love the set design uh, of the movie with the, uh, the ship and everything. You get some, you get some Star, Wars, Star Wars vibes from their ship, you know, the way it's shot with the models and everything and the buttons and like all that stuff. Like, I mean, this came out two years after a new hope. So obviously they got some, some inspiration there. Um, and, and I, I, I dug that. It was awesome. Um, you kind of putting you in place and on the ship and stuff. Um, like you kind of mentioned being in space. I love the claustrophobic vibe of not only mm -hmm. do you have the alien coming after you, but I mean, you're, you're stuck in space. Like there's nothing, there's nowhere to go. You're on your ship. Um, and that, I mean, you just, you got to work with what you have there in space. Um, there's no, there's no, there's nothing else you can have. You touched on the effects. Uh, they were phenomenal. You get the chest burst scene. Um, which was which was groundbreaking at the time. It was oh, phenomenal which stuff. Easily in my top five of one of the best effects or practical effects I've ever seen. Yeah, and it was up there with the thing uh, kind of chest burst scene as well. I think they're both kind oh, of the yeah. similar similar vibes. Uh, you got the xenomorph itself, uh, which was phenomenally designed. It, I mean, it was creepy. It's got the slime and the water and then I just the the mouth and all that. It's, it's oh awesome yeah, that stuff. mouth. I would that for when I watch this movie for the first time, I'm like, what the hell is that? Yeah, it's totally weird. And it's kind of still got it's got the arms and legs, so it's kind of got human vibes. I guess I don't know. Um, somebody's probably wearing a costume or something, but like at the same time, it's mixed in with the weird head and the mouth, and it's just it's a weird sight to see. And it's and like the spike tail too. This the tail, yeah. It's it's a weird sight to see. It's totally unique. Um, so I like that the face hugger, uh, special effects again. Um, that's another one like that. That was cool with the thing like the the tail going around the neck. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's and and the robot uh, Ash. Um, I, I thought those effects were pretty good. Like, I mean, you can tell obviously that he's sticking his head through there and stuff when he's talking. Um, but I thought the cool, like the little the ooze and stuff, the white ooze coming out and all the wiring and all that stuff. I mean, I thought it was pretty well done. I mean, they, they did a good job with the effects, given it was 1979. Yeah, and um, did we figure out about what that white ooze was? Because I remember during the movie he was like drinking some milk, so I thought about immediately as a well, it's white so couldn't that have been the milk or what do you could, think that was it could be the milk I, I mean i'm sure i'm sure it's been confirmed at this point what it is i haven't done the research to tell you what it is exactly um and and i'm sorry for that but um i always kind of just assumed it was like an oil or something like to keep everything moving but but milk makes sense too it kind of looked milky for sure um but i thought the um i, I thought the 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 effects on him were good um, uh, and it was, it was, it was creepy. It was weird. Um, I like that. Um, the sound design, I know you touched on the score, but the overall sound design with the, the, when you pressing buttons and stuff and the boo, boo, beep, all the little noises it made, I thought that was cool stuff. It really kind of sets the atmosphere up and, uh, puts you into that space vibe. I thought that was cool. Um, I like, again, I mean, just the way it was shot and everything was phenomenal. Again, like you, you have the great, the ship, the models and all that. Um, the first like five minutes of the movie, there's no dialogue, um, and it really just kind of puts you in there, like because everybody's asleep at the beginning of the movie, and it kind of just it shows the ship moving, and then it kind of there's some there's establishing shots, establishing uh, yeah of the of the ship and stuff, and then like there's no dialogue, and you got the 
the little emergency helmet thing there, and uh, and then you should see everybody wake up. I thought that did a really good job of setting up the atmosphere. Um, so that for me, that's I mean, that's most of my positives. I you know I thought uh, yeah I thought it, I thought everything was really well done. Yeah, and um, another one like another like is I love the tagline for this movie too, which that tagline is in space, no one can hear you scream. Because that, I mean, that just fits this movie perfectly. Because again, you're in space, nobody can hear you, nobody can help you except for your own crew members. So I thought that was just a really nice tagline to help with the marketing in this movie. Yes, for sure, for sure. And that adds to the claustrophobic uh, vibes it gives off if you're being stuck up there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I thought all that stuff was awesome. I mean, it, you the, the the list is endless for positives for this movie, but I I concised it down to uh you know a few things just so we could talk about briefly um tell me uh what uh, is there anything you dislike about the movie brett oh man uh, the, see that's tough because uh, again this was almost like to me almost a flawless movie but uh i was wouldn't say call these major dislikes but i would just maybe call like little nitpicks at it which um the first one it's got to be um i understand that this was a slow build movie like just you know the build up the anticipation to build up the scare however i just felt like sometimes it just went a little bit too long where you just um at one point get bored or like well how long is this gonna last again just just for a couple of them but other ones were just like just the perfect length and the last one was a little bit the third act uh, when the ship exploded the effects on it um just really didn't age well for me but again totally understand it was a whole different um timeline so uh, again just nitpicks and again just not really a lot of dislikes do you have any dislikes i got a few they're mostly plot driven dislikes not necessarily how the film was shot or directed or anything i thought everything there was done very well and the effects again there's a few of them here and there that haven't aged well but overall um i think the effects are phenomenal um my i mean most of my issues are plot holes um, and I guess we could start with, I mean, there's some convenience, the conveniences there, um, like when they crash land at the alien planet to begin like, I mean, I just didn't see the point of crashing. Like I, they were taking precautions and everything. Uh, they were going down nice and smooth and they just randomly kind of crashed. That didn't make sense to me. Uh, that just kind of, it, it wasn't really necessary. Um, and it was just kind of there just for the sake of adding some more dramatic, uh, uh, effects and then keeping them there longer. I thought, I mean, I, it, again, that's nitpicking. We're nitpicking here for this movie because it is pretty much a masterpiece. Um, another one is like, I mean, the ship had the self-destruct thing. I don't know why it had the self-destruct thing uh, to me. That was just kind of a convenience. Like, I, I mean, why would you have a, a ship with self-destruct? I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, well, you could argue, in case if you got an alien on board, man. That's literally the only reason I could think of. I try to think of, <laughs> of logistical reasons to have a self How convenient. Button. Yes, exactly. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, which is fine. It didn't really take me out of the movie. And also the whole contract of them having to go down to the planet for the self-distress call and stuff. Like, I mean, this is a contract. I mean, this is a commercial vessel. Um, why they have to go down and do any kind of investigative work is beyond me. I just, To me, that doesn't really make sense. Um, and if you do go down to that planet, I feel like your scientist, Ash, should get off the, the ship with you and, and, and investigate as well instead of staying on board. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could argue that it doesn't make sense. I mean, if it's at this point in the future where commercial uh, vessels are this popular, that I mean, why even need a, a scientist on board anyway? Um, but, I mean, I could kind of see that because, I mean, you're still in space and, I mean, anything – I mean, if anything goes wrong, it's nice to have a scientist there. But at least put some use to him – and bring him on this new planet with you to investigate, I think, would make sense. Um, but yeah, he stayed but, back. Uh, yeah, but I would probably think the reason he didn't is so that he could just protect his identity of being an android. Because during that beginning, no one had any clue that he was an android. And right. he was just um, following the protocols of Order 937. Yeah, he was following the protocols, but there's no reason he couldn't have gone onto the planet. He probably wouldn't even need a gas mask to do it. Like I, I mean, I think. It's, see, that's the point, though. If he didn't wear a gas mask while everybody else is, then they would just be like, "Okay, seven's up with this guy." Well, you could still throw one on, but either True. way, um, yeah. I mean, I just thought it would be nice for him to go out there, um, and I mean, I, it makes sense. He's the scientist on board. He's the scientist officer. 
Um, and with the, the first one of the first kills in the movie is your boy. His name is actually Brett as well. Uh, Mr. Henry Dean Stanton yeah. himself. Um, I just didn't think it was necessary for them to send him off on his own to chase a cat whenever they're looking for a damn alien. Like, it's like, I get it. Yeah, the cat's going to mess with your radar, but don't send this dude off solo dolo uh, when there's a freaking alien on the loose. Like, it, to me, that just didn't make sense. Um, he goes off, he finds the cat, he's by himself, the alien shows up, he dies, but it's like, this all, y'all should have been together, um, or I, the cat, to me, at that point, is not worth it. Again, these are nitpicks, guys. Uh, Damn and, Jones. Yeah, and I just, I mean, to me, uh, to me, that was just, it was, I, it was, it, there was, one, it was, it was probably the best kill of the movie, but I just don't think it was necessary for him to go off solo dolo. Um, and that kind of brings me to my last negative, is I thought the kills overall were kind of weak, um, yeah, I mean, you get a lot of cutaway shots. The effects on the alien were, were perfection. Uh, but, like, you kill, like, Parker and uh, the girl there at the end, and one, like, it just takes two seconds and they're both dead. Like, I would have liked to seen that fleshed out a little bit more um, and create some more suspense with the alien and stuff instead of him just kind of showing up and killing both of them instantaneously, and, and then it's over. The whole scene's over. Um so like I to me that was that, yeah that's my biggest negatives I think we could have drawn on I, the the alien stuff we could have drawn out a little bit more to create some more suspense mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know the effects were the effects were so good but I would have liked to see more of it uh, not necessarily like full lighting and stuff like of the of the of the creature itself but I would have liked to see more of the the cat and mouse stuff with with the alien but that's right. it for me. I mean again some of these are nitpicks man this is a great movie. But uh, that's that's what I got for negatives. Okay, and um, let me. Um, I actually forgot to mention this for a quick pause, real quick about Ripley. Uh, I actually noticed seven this second time around. I'm watching this movie as you know, getting prepared for this review. I can actually see some similarities between Ripley and one Sarah O'Connor. I see that as well. You could, yeah, because like they both um, start out as kind of like um, just. I wouldn't say weak, but just throughout the first movie of their movies, they just, you know, grew up stronger, became braver, and they actually, for Ripley defeating the alien and for Sarah O'Connor defeating the Terminator, and then both of their sequels, they just become ultimate badass women that just changed the game for Final Girls throughout the whole movie genre. Absolutely. I agree with that entirely. So, uh, overall, that brings us to... Um, I know I gave this uh, this flick a uh, four out of five. Uh, Brett, what, what's your score? Um, I am going to give um, Alien a four point five out of five. That will bring our average for the channel at four point two five out of five out of five stars. Overall, a very good flick. Definitely recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, and uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, then what are you doing watching all this anyway? It's a spoiler. This is spoiler filled review. But either way. Um, definitely recommend it. Absolutely. And more importantly, what do you all think about Alien? Like, do you feel the same way about us, or do you actually um, not like the movie? We would love to hear it, so be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. We'd love to interact with you all. And then also, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more content, and of course, ring that bell when that content becomes available. And Brad, where can they find us, too? They can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Letterboxd, you name it, we are there. Obviously, we're on YouTube as well. Yes, sir. So uh, with that, uh, we are going to end this review, and we will see you guys next time. Stay out of space, ladies and gents. Yes, please stay out of space. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Hasta la vista, baby. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening.